All right, class, we're about to finish up with Unit 3. Unit 3 is actually really, really short, and we're going to be talking about the other protective gear outside of just the helmet. It's all pretty much the same stuff in terms of the kind of the outer shell, the comfort padding, the protective parts, the impact absorption, retention. A lot of it's the same when it comes to gloves, jackets, pants, and boots, just like the helmet, okay? So rookies will be able to understand the importance of protective equipment to include eye protection, ear protection, gloves, jackets and pants, boots, as well as determine what gear is appropriate for each weather condition. Haha, it's a little curveball for you. Here we go, eye protection, very, very important. You need to have eye protection. If you can't see, you can't dodge anything. You can't break for anything. You can't even ride your motorcycle. So make sure you protect your eyeballs. Very, very important. So to be riding during the daytime, a tinted visor or a pair of sunglasses will help shield your eyes from the sun and make it easier for you to see. These same tinted visors though, Okay, so think about that. You do wear sunglasses at night? No. So if it gets dark, you might want to uh, not use them. So you can actually interchange some of these types of uh, helmet visors and shields. Uh, some of them have a little drop down, so you might want to be watching out for that. So when washing your eye protection, make sure you use a mild mixture of soap, water, and washcloths instead of paper towels or another disposable alternative. Uh, do not use any material that could scratch or damage the lens, and that's exactly why. Paper towels, you're going to be a little more abrasive. Use a washcloth, use a microfiber cloth, mild soap, water, just like with the helmet, okay? Just like with everything that we're going to be using for our PPE, personal protective equipment. Hearing protection. Who's this? Is, is it the last name start with Marquez? Is it Marquette? Mark? I don't know. Guys, if we were riding for any length of time on that motorcycle, we're going to start deteriorating your ears and their hearing ability, okay? So you never get it back. So once you lose it, you lose it. You don't want to have that issue. A lot of firefighters, they have to wear hearing aids real soon because of all the damaging noises that happen on a fire scene. We don't wear earring protection because it can melt inside your, he your ears. Uh, we do have headsets inside the engine and everything, but there's just so much going on. So if you don't have anything for your helmet, you don't have hearing plugs or anything like that, get some now. So wear something like this or anything that you can find. Some of the ones, uh, they can mold into your ears and they don't fall out, it's really cool. And here's the cool thing. So most earplugs only filter out noise at frequencies or volumes that will eventually damage your hearing but allow you to still hear what's going on around you. So it's only those like super weird pitch noises that can, are basically knives to your eardrums. It will block out a lot of that. It won't block out like having a conversation, listening to music, using a Bluetooth system talking to your buddy, it won't block that out. It'll block out that wind, like whistle, that damages your ears, okay? So gloves, there's my little gloves. I love gloves because if you fall down, you put your hands out, you don't want to scrape your hands. Did we just go over the whole thing? Kind of, yeah? Okay, so gloves made specifically for motorcycling are highly recommended. You don't want to use BMX gloves, gardening gloves, mechanics gloves, okay? Those aren't meant for the road. They're meant for banging your knuckles on an engine part. They're often curved to reduce the hand fatigue while gripping handlebars. So they are pre-curved, so they're kind of like this instead of like this. They're pre-curved so that you can have your hands comfortable. So anyways, there are many different types of gloves, each with unique purpose. And there's a reason why this is here. So gauntlet gloves. This is a gauntlet glove. You see how it goes way down his wrist and you see the other one on the other side, doesn't? Okay. So gauntlet gloves cover extending from the hand of the forearm to cover the cuff of your riding jacket in order to better insulate your riding gear and to stabilize the wrist during a fall. So it's like a splint almost. It's not gonna be like super strong, but it's gonna do it a little bit. And it's also gonna go over your jacket, so now wind can't go inside your jacket. So it's really good for cold weather. Also, I think they're recommended and required for track riding. You can also see the impact protection, the plastic right there on the wrist. So it's actually pretty good. So the far one on the right, it's a nice little uh, strap. That's the kind I use here because it's hot. And having something like this, it gets really hot. So something like that, I do want the airflow to go inside the jacket. That's really important. Uh, what they're saying when it comes to the insulation, some of them have like uh, liners on the inside, Thinsulate. So it's going to make it to where it's going to be a little bit warmer. There's Gore-Tex, water resistance, and all these different things. And it all depends on where you ride, okay? I don't know why this is right here, but we're going to go ahead and play with it. Be sure to get a glove with double stitching as this ensures the quality of a glove and it will hold together and be more durable. Okay, I'm blocking the text, but here's the thing. The stitching, you want to make sure it's double stitched. So the leather could be amazing. So good, right? It's so abrasion resistant, impact, all this other stuff. 
but then it tears off at the fingers. And now you don't have it anymore because the threads are terrible. It wasn't double stitched, reinforced stitched together. So jackets and pants, okay? There's the jacket, there's the pants, there's my belly. It looks pretty big. Why are we using this picture? Okay. Riding suits typically consist of either separate jackets and pants or a one-piece combination that keeps your limbs and torso fully protected. You see how it, there's no seams? When I talk about the gloves coming apart at the seams, there's no jacket and pants separation. So your jacket kind of goes up when you're sliding. You get all this going. This, you're not going anywhere. Plus, it looks kind of cool. Kind of looks cool. You match it to your bike. It looks like a Power Ranger. Anyways, most motorcycle-specific protection comes with removable armor, impact protection, just like the impact absorption liner, right? Some suits have vents that can be sealed or unsealed with a zipper in order to adjust for changing weather. Gets too hot, some of these have zippers that will allow airflow in. Gets too cold, zip it back up. It is recommended to keep them sealed whenever possible to maximize protection, but they can be useful if you begin to overheat on your ride. Think about that. You want them down so that it doesn't have an opening for it can rip, but you also want to have it open so that you know, if it gets too hot, you're not overheating. Therefore, you're having cognitive decline. You're starting to get heat exhaustion. You're not thinking. You're not planning your ride. There's that little, you know, give and take going on there. So jackets and pants may vary in their material and purpose. So think about leather, textiles, and stuff like that. But for the most part, they should fit snugly, be slightly longer in the limbs than normal clothing would be, and will often be almost radiant in color to increase visibility. The reason why you want to have it longer in the arms is because when you go reach for your handlebars, you don't want it to come back up. If the motorcycle gear you are purchasing is not particularly bright, a brightly colored or high visibility vest is advised. So if you're wearing just all black, throw on a vest, especially at night, okay? If anything at night, just do it at night. Uh, it doesn't matter how cool you look if you don't make it to your destination. Serious. You look pretty cool in the casket. Maybe, depending on the accident. A protective full body layer is almost as important to your health and safety as your helmet. So just like I said, the helmet's going to protect your brain from getting TBIs, hopefully, but also just protect the most important thing, the central nervous system in the brain. Now, extending that central nervous system is your spine, okay? A jacket with a good back protector, which you also have your organs, okay, your heart and everything. You got all these different things. You don't want to be cutting things up. You don't want to have blood loss. The largest organ on your body is your skin. So if we start ripping skin off, we're going to have problems thermoregulating our body temperature. We're going to have problems with infection and getting sepsis and then actually dying from infection just because we have our skin off. So make sure we have good gear. Make sure we are actually paying attention to what it is that we need to have on, right? So leather in hot summer months. No, maybe not textiles in hot summer months. Yes. So very, very important. Just as important as the helmet. Go ahead and read this if you want to. I'm going to just pause it. I'll pause. Okay, we're going to move on. Boots. Very important. You don't want to not have feet anymore. Okay? So think about it. We're on the motorcycle. Boots, legs on each side, right? Get T-boned. What do you have to protect your leg? You don't have a crash bar. You don't have airbags. You have your boots. That's it. That's why it's very important, okay? There's my boots. I love them. Love my boots. Uh, they're actually high boots. They're very high boots, but I have my pants over the top of them. So a good pair of low-heeled, over-the-ankle boots are the minimum we require. So there's going to be low-heeled under-ankle. So it's going to be right below the ankle like normal shoes. So think about it also, okay? So just like your tires, you have traction. Now we got our feet. We got traction. We go up to a stoplight, we put our foot down, and we have no traction. We have flip-flops, and they're slimy, whatever it is, because your feet sweat. And then you slip out from underneath you. Now the bike falls on top of your slippery feet and ankle and smashes it. So if you had proper boots with traction like this, you're actually going to be a lot better off. Boots also come in various features recommended for motorcycles like steel toes and steel rivet soles. The height of the boot on your leg may also be relevant depending on the type of pants you're wearing, so you might want a few pairs. Okay, so I like to have these big boots that go above the shin and everything so that I can protect it, but they're not really cool if you wear shorts because if you get off the bike and you go to your destination, you want to walk around, you wear shorts, you've got big boots. So you might want to adjust some of that stuff depending on where you're going. But one of the big things here, steel toes and steel rivet soles. So steel toes, pretty self-explanatory. You don't want to crush your toes. You don't want to break your toes. So in an event of crash, it's going to hopefully keep your toes in place. Uh, the steel rivet soles or any type of mid-shank sole 
So that's going to be anything. It could be steel. It could be a lighter carbon fiber. It could be something that's going to be stiff. And the reason why you do that, and this is what I learned in the fire service, is that firefighters, we had the same thing. And it was because when we climb the rungs of a ladder, it's going to depress on our feet. If we have a mid-shank sole, it's going to keep it nice and firm. So when we get on it, it's firm. That's the same thing when it comes to pegs. We don't want to have our foot go down. And the reason why they say that in the fire service is because you have foot fatigue. You can actually damage your foot, damage your arch, and then just have a bunch of problems. You feel more secure also when you actually have a footing on it. Footing. (laughs) But you also have it to where it's nice and stiff. So making sure you have one too is very important. You don't want a flimsy shoe. You want to have something that's going to be stiff, but also able to move depending on what it is you're doing. If you're going to go walking afterwards, have something a little bit more malleable. But if you're going to be going off road and it's going to be just, you don't need to move your ankle at all. You want to get the most protection, get something stiff all around, but definitely that mid shank sole. Very, very, very important. Very important. Here we go. Most uh, work boots are sufficient. But on a motorcycle, there are some considerations to be made. I recommend getting a boot that gives the most protection. So I know some of you have asked me in the past, well, I have a work boot. I have this boot. It has steel toe. It does have a mid shank, but it also doesn't have ankle protection. Okay, so that's the thing. Motorcycle boots have ankle protection. They're also reinforced in high speed type stuff. Motorcycle boots also usually, the, the ones I pick, don't have laces. Last thing you want is to have a lace get caught in that chain. Last thing you want to have a lace do is get caught on the peg when you put your foot down. So they usually have straps. They usually, not Velcro, but they usually have the, like the rollerblade straps. Um, They're going to have zippers. So that's a big thing, okay? So as a new rider, you have a greater chance of dropping your bike on your ankle during slow speed maneuvers. Boots with mid or full calf protection is best. They get warm, but they are the best. Here we go. So talking about warm, warm weather gear, warm weather gear needs to protect you while taking into consideration the potential for heat exhaustion, heat stroke, and dehydration. Kind of the same thing when you get into dehydration and heat stroke, heat exhaustion, heat cramps, heat strokes, they're all different levels. So let's go and talk a little briefly about that. Okay. So heat cramps is when your body does not have the necessary electrolytes and fluids involved. Okay, class, I'm trying to keep you awake. By the way, drink some water right now. Drink some water right now. So what happens is you cramp, your muscle cramps. So imagine your hand cramping in the middle of a turn. Imagine your your hips cramping. Imagine your legs cramping. Imagine your back cramping in the middle of doing anything on your motorcycle. Heat exhaustion starts to play in the effect where you have the cognitive decline. You start not thinking very well. You start sweating profusely. You start thinking about how hot it is. And you start having issues trying to see, maybe trying to move quickly. So now we're starting to think more of like a a central nervous system problem, just like with drinking too much alcohol. You're starting to slow down. You're starting not to think right. You're starting to think late. So you're not able to plan your ride very well. You're not able to zone into yellow stage. You start zoning out. Very dangerous because the next thing is a heat stroke. A heat stroke is terrible. You're not sweating at all. You start to, then you actually have a full body system just deteriorate. You're going to pass out. You're not going to think well. It's almost like getting a brain injury from a crash. And you see those people stumbling around, not making sense. That's a heat stroke. That can happen while you're riding. Not good. If it gets the heat exhaustion, you're done. If you get the heat stroke, you're in the hospital. If you get a heat cramp, that's a reminder. Drink some fluids. Maybe have like something to eat, something salty. Maybe get some electrolytes. Maybe eat, drink some Pedialyte. Do something. Not very good. I have no idea what any of this says, but if I was talking this whole time and you're able to read this, very good. I just want to give you a little extra. (laughs) Make sure to drink enough water and know your personal tolerance for heat. Very good. Oh, real quick. What absorbs a lot of heat? Water. That's why we use it in firefighting. So the more water you have in your system, in your body, the more you can tolerate that heat. The less you have, the less you're going to tolerate. A wet piece of wood, doesn't burn well. A dry piece of wood does. Okay. Cold weather gear. Gear that provides adequate insulation is essential in preventing hypothermia. So heat exhaustion and heat stroke is hyperthermia. Hyper high, hypo low. Thermia is thermia. So anyways, um, hypothermia. Hypothermia is caused by lower than usual body temperature, can result in lowered reaction times and sluggish delayed ability to process your surroundings which can be deadly for a rider. So just like drinking, 
I'm going to have to read this because we don't have a lot of hypothermia issues here in the desert southwest. I knew quite a bit from firefighting for the heat. So counteract this by layering clothes beneath your motorcycle gear and wearing a fully sealed windproof and waterproof jacket. Layer up. Layer up. I When it gets cold for me, I, it doesn't get this cold like it was the snow. When it gets cold for me down here, I have my jacket, but I also have like an Under Armour uh, cold gear base layer. So dressing in layers. So I have like a base layer, I have a shirt, and I have my, my motorcycle jacket. And if it gets really cold, I have that base layer, a hoodie, and my jacket. But you don't want to get to the point where you're too restricted, okay? Uh, thermal layers are a wonderful base as they are meant to trap body heat and keep you warm while riding. Cold gear should fit very snugly and should include multiple overlapping layers. There you go. I just said that. Thank you very much. If you're going to be out in the cold for extended periods of time, you may also want to take a tip from the skiers, okay? And use a few of those jacket pockets to store some exothermic sodium acetate heating pads. Why couldn't we just say hand warmers? All right, so waterproof gear. Uh, if you're worried about rain, investing in a suit specifically built to keep you dry and warm will make all the difference. It really will. Uh, you can easily get hypothermia by having water on your body and you're riding 45 miles an hour. So now the wind takes the heat with the water and you get colder and colder and colder and colder. It's kind of like when you're sweating, right? Yeah, it's the exact same thing. When you sweat, the wind takes it off of you. And it makes it so that you cool off, which causes you to dehydrate too, by the way. So constantly drink fluid so you can sweat, heat exhaustion, heat stroke. But it's the same process here. If you're wet and you're riding, it's going to cool you off way too quick. So you want to have a dry, warm, rain-resistant, water-resistant jacket. Okay. So while you're riding, it must be adapted to account for the rain. A warm and dry rider will focus on the task much easier than a cold and wet one. Okay. Zone in, yellow stage. All right. So this is quite a bit. This is quite a bit. So this is the final note. And I'll go ahead. You can go ahead and pause so you can see this. And you can read it yourself. But here's the thing. A lot of people like motorcycles because they like to look cool. And part of looking cool is having the cool looking gear. And sometimes people think, like I did, the cool looking gear was that three-quarter helmet. And then just a nice looking jacket, regular jeans, really cool looking boots, and then gloves. I always like wearing gloves because you look cool. The problem is that if it's not motorcycle specific, in the event of a crash, the main purpose of having that gear, it's not going to do its job. It's just not going to do its job. And you're going to have to go to the hospital or you're going to have to deal with road rash. And now your, your birthday suit, your, your normal gear that you wear on your body, your skin, is completely damaged. So the point is here, make sure you get the gear that is right for you. If you're in a hot weather climate, get hot weather gear. So perforated gear, so textiles, leather, whatever it is, have it perforated so that the air can flow through it. But make sure you do have that gear. Make sure you have gear that has shoulder protection, impact absorption. Make sure it has elbow protection. Make sure it has a back protector. Okay, very, very important. Make sure you actually get pants, that same thing, either leather, you can have uh, heavy cotton. You can, there's even riding jeans that have aramid fibers like Kevlar integrated into the buttocks and in certain impact areas. They have hip armor, knee armor, and then boots. I like to have over-the-calf boots because I want to protect my shin as best as possible. But the main thing here is having that traction on the ground. Main thing is having that midsole shank so that your foot isn't collapsing on the peg and so you don't have this fatigue going on. Also, the ankle protection. Make sure it has ankle protection. That's why I want at least an over-the-ankle boot. Gloves. Just like with everything else, make sure the stitching is really good. Reinforced stitching on everything, but gloves I want to make sure because you're constantly doing this and you don't want it to tear after a few rides, okay? Make sure the gloves fit you well. Once again, make sure it fits the weather that you're going to be doing in. So if you need to get Thinsulate, if you need to get a gauntlet glove, if you need to have a short cuff glove, if you need to have a glove that's waterproof, Figure it all out. Sometimes it's better to have a rain set, a hot weather set, a cold set, and I get that it's expensive. So with normal gear, for me anyways, I have a hot weather set only, and then if it gets cold, I wear different layers. I layer up, and I make sure I can do that. So I can do both the best of both worlds to an extent, and that's the main thing, is that the goal is to not look cool the goal is to be safe, but there is definitely gear out there that is safe that makes you look cool. 
So buy the gear that appeals to you, but be willing to sacrifice looks for utility because protection against weather, debris, falls, and other hazards will be well worth it in the long run. Okay? So class, make sure you guys are actually following along and, and paying attention because we got a quiz. Let's get right into it. 